following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. We are going to enter now into the second uh, part of the Mahabharata. But before, before going that, into that, we are going to explain about the, the wilderness, because uh, the title of the second part is called The Wilderness. And of course, if we read the, the Bible, it's something similar that happens there with Moses in the wilderness. <coughs> and uh, if we uh, study this part that we uh, r read uh, many times in the past, we will uh, more or less understand what is going on in the Mahabharata. Remember that uh, we cited this uh, uh, quotation from the Bible, from Numbers, verse, uh, I mean, chapter 21, from verse 5 to 9, in which uh, we were talking about the wilderness. Here we have now the tree of life in the same quotation, where uh, we find that the people were I mean, they spoke against uh, Elohim and against Moses. And we uh, show you that this is precisely uh, the place where Moses is, is Tifereth. And in the Mahabharata, you find that Arjuna is precisely the one that relates to Tifereth. The one that is very skillful in, with the bow and the arrow. And... Uh, the two, uh, the twins, uh, Nakula and Sahadeva, are of course the two Sephiroth, Had and Etzach. The king, which is uh, named Yuristira in the Mahabharata, relates to Yesad. And uh, uh, the strong one, Bhima, is uh, the physical body, Malkut. But in this case, we will say it is what the Master Samael calls the body of liberation that is physical, that we build when we rise the first serpent in the physical body, or which is Malkut. So there you find there that the five uh, Pandavas that uh, Mahabharata talks about are one, two, three, four, the five Sephiroths in relation with the Bodhisattva that we call. The five. That's why you find that the five ones, the five bodhisattvas, or I mean the five bodies, we will say, because all of them make one. That's why you find that they are uh, married to uh, the soul. That uh, I believe it, it, her name is Draupadi, the, the spiritual soul. And it is, uh, it, is, uh, it is obvious because uh, the whole work that we perform alchemically 
is always related with the spiritual soul. And is the one that is protected by Krishna, which in this case is Chokhma. Vishnu, in, indeed, is, is Chokhma. But when Vishnu descends into that and becomes incarnated in the true man, the true human being, and then his name is Krishna, hmm? similar to Christ. In the Hebrew or Kabbalah, New Testament, we call the incarnation of uh, Christ, Chokhmah, Jesus, Jesus Christ. I don't particularly Jesus Christ. But in this case, that Jesus Christ is a union of Krishna and Arjuna. You see? This is how you see it. In the Mahabharata, it's more obvious the two parts. But in the Bible, you don't see those two parts, unfortunately. But here you see Krishna and Arjuna. The two of them make the Bodhisattva. And this is precisely the beauty of uh, the Mahabharata. And of course, as you see, as we explained in the previous lecture, the forces of Gebura which are the spiritual soul, are the forces that descend into Malkut. That's why in this graphic we show you, we put uh, uh, Ha Nahashim, Nahashim means plural for Nahash. Nahash is serpent. Ha Nahashim means the serpents, because Ha means the letter Hey, at the beginning is the. And now we have another uh, word there for serpents as well. Means ha sha sherafim, sherafim, plural too. But uh, you know, when we talk about the sherafim or the seraphim, also we talk in the world of Yetzirah, we say that they are the angels of Geburah, right? But here, the Bible, when you see here, Hanashim Hasherafim, fiery serpents, is the translation, right? Because the title, serpents, is before. Right? Meaning, is pointing that they are not talking about the angels of Geburah, but the fiery or serpentine forces of Geburah that descend to the earth in our physical body. That says, Nahashim. Ha Seraphim. This is what we call Hashim. Because when they enter into Malkut, they become Hashim. Or the soul of fire. The soul of fire that all of us has that expresses itself in the sexual organs. And this is precisely the point. When the when the when in Malkut, which is the kingdom, the king and the queen, which are blind, meaning that they don't know anything. Everything is happening around them, you see, and they need a translator, uh, they need a lecturer to explain. But this, which the Mahabharata explains there, is happening around all of us. But first, we are blind. The king, the soul in Malkut is blind, because remember that Malkut is the kingdom. But there is a war there that is going to start because of the kingdom, right? in order to dispute the forces. And the queen is also, by her own will, blind. There's a lot of people that they uh, don't want to listen. They just prefer to be like they are. They uh, see, says, if I am, with, if my king, if my consciousness is blind, I don't care. I like to be blind and to enjoy life, right? and to do whatever we want to do. And that's why she is a fornicator, obviously, or using the energies of Geburah that is sent to Malkut in their own way. As we see the quotation of the Bible, Numbers 21 from 5 to 9, that it says, and the people spoke against Elohim and against Moses. He says, but the, the, here, is precisely uh, the attitude or the outcome of those people that walk in the path. As soon as they walk on the path, 
the ordeal start. Because when you enter into this path, is what you understand. It's not only to build the bodies, but to pay what we owe. We have to pay. We have karma. And nobody mocks the law. Like in other groups or sects, religions, that are people that are not initiates, they say, you enter here, and Jesus already died on the cross, and if you believe in him, because he already died, you go to heaven, because you don't need to annihilate uh, eagles or to pay karma. Just believe in Jesus. This is it. Because they take, literally, the, the Bible. But we had to study this. This is not that easy. Of course, in order for Jesus Christ, or in order for Krishna and Arjuna to come into us and to do the work that we had to do, we had to do alchemy. We had to do a work. Meditation, which is annihilation of the ego. Birth, which is sexual transmutation. And sacrifice for humanity in order to pay our karma. So the whole process is karmic. But people always protest. There are many people that enter into these groups, the different groups of Gnosis. And they left because as soon as they started, the law start going on them in order for them to pay. And they say, why? I entered into this knowledge. It's just suffering. I don't want to be here. Well, there are two ways. If you enter into this path, you have to pay. According to your level, of course, little by little. But uh, this is the path that one chooses in order not to pay what we owe down there. If you don't like the path, because you say, oh, no, 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 I prefer to be like other people that are happy, etc., in this physical world. Well, sooner or later, your soul, as you as soul, will descend into Klipoth, and then you will pay your karma mechanically. But here, we are choosing to pay what we owe in initiation. And this is precisely what the wilderness, the second part of Mahabharata states. They choose exile. What in Judaism is called diaspora. They are abandoned the, their own, their, their own uh, land, their own kingdom, in order for them to pay. And of course, they go into the wilderness. And in other lectures, we told you that in, in Bible, the wilderness is the midbar, the midbar. This is how you said uh, wilderness. In, uh, in, in, the, in Hebrew. And you see there, that is in relation with Netzach, the mind. Because the whole work that we have to do is in the mind. With the mind, we do a lot of evil because we know how to send evil thoughts, how to do bad things with the mind. But when we enter into this path, we have to stop doing that in using meditation, annihilation of the ego, in order for us to walk on the path. Otherwise, we, we cannot advance. Mm -hmm. Because the ego is the animal element that we have to disintegrate. Whether we do it and build wisdom, build mastery, or what we call in the previous lectures, objective reasoning. That is mastery. If you don't meditate and you don't comprehend your ego, what are you going to the build? Nothing. That's why meditation is indispensable. It's necessary in order to, for the master to appear inside of us. And that's why it appears in the Tzach, because in the Tzach is where we have all the problems. So Moses in the wilderness is precisely the initiate in the desert, in the wilderness. Or as the Mahabharata says, all of them into the wilderness to do the work, to, to do something in order to see if they are worthy to take the kingdom. And not only here, but all of the tree of life. And for that, of course, they had to work seriously in themselves. So, of course, the wilderness, in, in this case, everything is synthesized in Malkut. Malkut is symbolized by one cross with four sides. Those four sides, of course, are related with one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four in, in the physical body. Right? The four sides of the cross. In other words, when you enter into this path, you need a physical body. And when you are on the wilderness, or in the wilderness, 
you are experiencing the ordeals of the four elements in Malkut. And if you enter into the astral plane, in astral plane, you enter into the mental plane, into the mental plane, and even in the causal plane, which is the cause. Because the cause of the ego, the cause of karma, is because the soul, Tifereth, that was here in Malkut, was stupid. Didn't know how to handle the impressions. He created a lot of karma. So karma, ordinary karma, relates to this, by Sephiroth. Right? And the four horses of, uh, of Revelation, I'll be talking in the lectures too. So when we start protesting because this path is so hard, and then behold, it says, And Jehovah sent fiery serpents. And that, in this case, is to help. Fire, transmute. You need more bread, but we said here, Bethlehem. That bread is not uh, what the people think. The bread that they eat, uh, uh, they think that was a, a dew from heaven and blah, blah, blah. That bread is the bread of wisdom that you acquire with comprehension. You want more? More food? You want to develop, uh, to have more food in your, in your soul? Well, here is. The serpents. But these serpents that descend here into Malkut, which is Nahashim Ha Shirafim, are the forces, the energies that work not only in us, but in the enemy as well, in the ego, in other words, inside of us. But there is fire, whether you awake the Kundalini or the Kundabafer. But of course, Jehovah Elohim says, well, if you want to defeat your own lust, your own ego, work with a separate of bronze. It is very clear there, we just drawn the, uh, the separate of, of bronze there, and I want to show you that is the outcome of the transmutation of alchemy. And if you worship the separate of brass, if you work with your Divine Mother, in other words, then th the serpents won't have any effect in you. Whether they are your ego or the other serpents, which are sorcerers, witches, black magicians, which uh, are here in Malkut, working with the forces of Klippoth in order to make the life of the mission of the initiates miserable. But uh, the Divine Mother always helped, the forces, superior forces always help. if you were, you work with that. Mm -hmm. And this is precisely what you see in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Because in the wilderness also you find sometimes oases with water. That water is always Yesod. And remember that Yesod relates to the waters, the critic waters of Genesis. And the one that relates to Yesod, the waters of, uh, of life, is that personage which is going to be the king, which is called Juristira. It's here in, in Yesod. Remember that. The other two are belong to Netzai and Hod, Bima to Malkut. In Malkut, remember, that is the Sephira that is between the tree of life and the tree of death, which is called Klipoth. And uh, Arjuna always is the one, which is the human soul, okay, is the only capable to go up into the superior worlds in order to receive forces, communication, secrets, to combat, to fight the enemies, which are in Klipoth. Because this Mahabharata talks about the great war that they had and all the struggle that they had against those that are, belong to Klippoth hmm? and their own ego. Because everything is, how you call, uh, similar. We have ego, we attract evil. We don't have ego, we attract only the good. And that's why uh, 
you see there in, in this uh, graphic how in, in the previous lecture we were talking about these uh, names in Hebrew. But here we place the names in each sephira in order to you to understand what forces are we talking about. What is the Nahash, nah, nah, Nahashot? You see, this is something very important here. Serpent in Hebrew is Nahash. And bronze or copper, Nahashot. The only difference is the T at the end. But that T is a cross. Huh? Because the symbol of Venus is a cross. Huh? That was in ancient times the T, the, the letter Tav was not like this, it was just a cross. And this is very uh, significant. And you see there Dabar, which means the word. This Davarim words is related to Tifereth. Moshe, people, people are always here. Ha, ham, Ha'am, Ha'am. You see, Ha'am, and it is very uh, uh, intriguing that when you said, I am, I am, 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 is this am here, am, am, the people, Ha'am. Hmm. And uh, that's why I said, who are you? I am. He said, yeah, yeah, Ham. You need to go up, you don't need to be Israel. You see, when you read here, for instance, that the people of Israel were dying. Do not think physical people, because Israel is here. All the archetypes of Tifereth. When the people of Israel are dying, that means part of your soul is sank into Klippoth, because you are acting in the wrong way. You are allowing the forces of the fiery serpents to be fed with your lust. And when you do that, you lose consciousness, which is the people of Israel. Mm? And the people here, of course, is just physical. But when you talk about Israel, are the archetypes. This is how you understand what is written in the Bible. And uh, uh, it is good if you study that in order to you to understand this verse from 5 to 9, Numbers 21st chapter, encloses a lot when you know Kabbalah and alchemy. Otherwise, if you don't know anything, you think that the people there, the, 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 the people in this day and age understand. The people, the Hebrews that are there in the Middle East right now, in the Mediterranean, that when they were coming from Egypt, literally, they were in the wilderness suffering that. Now, this is symbolic. This is Kabbalistic, alchemical. It's not that it happened to them, no. It happened to those that were working in themselves as, as initiates. But the people now in the Middle East, I call Israel, all of them are fornicators. It's rare to find an initiate there because they believe that they are already saved because they are identified like the Brahmins that believe themselves to be uh, saved also because what the Mahabharata talks about or the other books talks about the Brahmins. But one thing is the Brahmins and another thing is the Brahmins. One thing is the people of Israel as archetypes. You know, other thing are the people that are there identifying and trying to conquer the Holy Land and killing their brothers and sisters there for their greed. Okay, now let us go into, into the movie. And that explanation was uh, good in order for us to comprehend more the, what, according to my understanding, will help you. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. 
You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah, Lord,